Hey everybody, welcome to the Happy Harvest Homestead. Today we're going to be talking about how to properly choose the absolute best meat rabbit breed for your situation. A lot of people who want to start getting into rabbits will ask the question, well, what is the best meat rabbit breed, fully expecting there to be a one-word answer that will perfectly suit them and their situation and be the best overall. But in reality, this is an impossible question for someone else to answer for you. You're going to have to research and learn and think yourself and decide what's best for you. I know that it would be so much better to just have someone tell you what to do. But really, if you just go off someone else's advice or someone else's good experience, you will probably fail or at least not be as good as you could be. So if you are at the point of choosing a meat rabbit breed, we must assume that you have already chosen your meat rabbit goals. Like most things in life, having an overall plan and goals for your rabbitry will make a lot of what could be tough decisions or impossible decisions either super easy to make or you won't have to decide at all because you'll already have a path forward. If you don't have rabbitry goals already, then pause this video and watch the video that just popped up in the right hand corner of the screen and also that will be linked in the description box. That goes into a lot more detail of rabbitry goals, what my goals are, why they're my goals, and how to make your own. And then come back and finish this video. Okay, so now that your meat rabbitry goals are all set up and you know what your overall plan is, you can begin researching the traits of different breeds. And don't even limit yourself to standard meat rabbit breeds. You can also try branching out into other non-traditional meat breeds that may end up suiting your situation better than a traditional meat breed. Some examples of this process might be, oh gosh, I live in a really hot place, so I want really heat-hardy rabbits, so I will get a heat-hardy breed, which usually those are Tomuk rabbits, or I want mass production, so I'm going to go with New Zealand rabbits. Or you may be thinking, I do want rabbit meat, but I also want to save the pelts and make crafts or sell them. So I will look into a dual purpose breed that has both good meat and good fur. So maybe I'll go for a Rex rabbit. Or maybe you want to recoup some feed costs by selling some babies as pets every litter to help pay for the feed the rest of the rabbits eat. So you want to do some research in your local area and see what breeds are desired and can sell for a high price and then you get those breeds. But one super important thing you need to understand, which I'm surprised by a lot of people just don't get this, but one big mistake a lot of people make when they're choosing a rabbit breed is assuming that all rabbits who happen to be of that breed are the peak breed standard perfection description of that rabbit. For example, it is commonly said that New Zealand rabbits are the fastest growing rabbits who have the best meat to bone ratio. But there are more than plenty New Zealand rabbits who are very slow growing and have very bad meat to bone ratio. Another example is Harlequin rabbits are said to be amazing mothers, but there are plenty of Harlequin rabbits who are terrible mothers. Or Rex rabbits are supposed to be very susceptible to sore hawks. But some people have Rex rabbits whose feet are better than the supposedly better footed breeds. Or some supposedly heat hardy Tomuk rabbits are extremely sensitive to heat and will die more easily than a more individually hardier rabbit whose breed is supposedly not heat hardy. Just because the breed standard is a certain way doesn't mean every rabbit of that breed is a certain way. And this goes both in the positive and negative ways. Some rabbits who are supposed to grow slow will grow fast, and some rabbits who are supposed to grow fast will grow slow. And the key to getting the best individual rabbits for your individual needs are really buying from an established breeder who breeds for the same traits you want, or getting the best rabbits you can, even if they're not perfect for you, and breeding the traits you want by yourself. If you are looking for massive production in each rabbit, then instead of buying New Zealand rabbits from some backyard breeder on Craigslist who just had their first litter, instead search out an established breeder who is on purpose breeding their rabbits for growing fast and being big and they're keeping the best babies and breeding those again 
and not just breeding random willy-nilly whoever to whoever because they're cute or their color is pretty. If you really care about good mothering ability in your rabbits, then make sure you find somebody who also cares about that, who has kept records of the mother's habits and how many kits she has, how many of them survive, how good her milk production is, and then even better if you can get the mother's mother and the mother's father's mother and the father's mother and like all the generations back, if you find someone really good who's really keeping track of it, they will be invested in the same things you're invested in so you know you're getting good stock. But for the people who don't have amazing breeders in their area who are breeding for exactly what they want, I have often had great success with buying just random rabbits and they turned out to be amazing like edelweiss and henry they were just some free rabbits someone was giving to us and i figured why not if i don't like them i can butcher them and it'll just be more meat for a freezer but i'll keep them around for a little bit test them out see how they do and they are now our best breeders henry is our new herd sire and edelweiss is an excellent mother and body condition wise they are doing the best on our all-natural diet which can be hard for some rabbits to do. So it is for sure possible to accidentally get high quality rabbits, but then also you can take a gamble, get some random rabbits, and it'll backfire on you terribly. Kind of like what happened to me with Onyx and Cattail and Constance and Asha, those four rabbits I got. They never really produced much, and honestly, they caused more problems than they were worth. So it is definitely a gamble, but it can pay off greatly. One last thing I want to mention here, though, is that you don't have to discount mixed breeds or crossbred rabbits. I don't have much experience with hybrid vigor, but I have heard some pretty cool things about it. So maybe you want to go that route and breed one purebred breed to a different purebred breed, which supposedly makes their babies a bit faster growing and a bit more hardy and disease resistant or, or a bunch of other good stuff. And also, don't discount my favorites, the meat mutts, that have been bred regardless of breed, just for their good qualities. When a rabbit has a super fancy purebred pedigree, that often makes them more valuable, and even if they're not the highest quality individual rabbit, they have a pedigree, and they're so fancy, and their lines are so good, so might as well keep them and sell them to somebody you know, and make money off of it because they have such a high perceived value. Whereas a high quality mixed breed rabbit, their value lies in their quality, their individual traits that they have. They can't rest on the fact that their mother who took terrible care of her kits was pedigreed. They have to earn their value themselves through their own good things. They grew fast, so they're valuable. Their mother's a good mother, and it's likely they will be too, so they're valuable. They stayed healthy while other rabbits got sick, so they are valuable. And oftentimes, you can get a lot of good traits by conglomerating a bunch of different breeds over time than you can just by staying in the purebred boundaries. So whether you are looking for purebred New Zealands and Californians to crossbreed and create hybrid vigor in their babies, or you want some very expensive, very fancy, beautiful colored Rex rabbits to sell as pets, or you're looking for those tough, hardy meat mutts who have been bred to be disease resistant. After you decide on your rabbitry goals and decide on which breed or mix of breeds you want, take a look around your local pool of meat rabbit breeders, get to know them, know their rabbits, and make sure they are breeding their rabbits well for the correct traits that you want. Or just get the best you can and breed for your desired traits all on your own. And make sure you have fun doing all this too, because it does sound really stressful and hard and serious, but in all reality, raising rabbits is such a joy, it is so fun, and if you take your time to begin things correctly, your chances of success simply skyrocket. Thanks for watching!